David and Adam are still looking for the codling treasure. They know that Adam's grandfather found it and hid it again before he died. He too left a clue. When Philip came to the single rose, under the water the treasure was taken. The boys know that by Philip, grandfather meant Squeak Wilson. Next afternoon, we ambush Squeak. Now! Now! What do you know about the treasure? I don't know anything about the treasure. What are you talking about? Grandfather must have told you no. something. But it was no good. He'd always been scared of Adam, and all the questions about roses and underwater hiding places just made him more frightened than ever. So we decided to leave that bit of the clue for a while and concentrate on the single rose. What are you doing? Digging it up. We aren't be furious. She doesn't care about the garden anymore. Anyway, I've got to risk it. It was Grandfather's favourite rose. And maybe it ties up with Philip. Squeak. He did the garden once, remember? you dig up and kill, yes, kill, the rarest and most beautiful rose in the garden. You've done a murder for the lowest motive, money. I swear you drain the river, pull down this house and root up everything that's precious here. You may as well know, this afternoon I called on the Smiths. On Saturday the contract will be signed, the house will be sold. I knew Adam thought that was the end. We'd never find the treasure by Saturday. Would you have the minnow? Take her this afternoon, down to your place. But she's your boat. Well, I'm giving her to you. But you'll be coming back in the holidays. My mum says you can come and stay with us. No, I won't be coming back. I knew Adam meant it, so I agreed to take the minnow away. On the way home, I remember the day I first found the canoe and how much I wanted to keep it. But now, the way things had worked out, I didn't want it at all. Hello, nothing to do, David. No. See that canoe's been out there for the last couple of days? Lost interest in it, have you? Sort of, yes. And a quarrel with Adam? No, but he's fed up about the house being sold. Well, she won't get rid of that place in a hurry. It's pretty ramshackle and damp too, I expect. But it is sold. Mr. Smith bought it. He and Miss Coddy are going to the estate agents today to fix it up. Good Lord. Fancy Smith wanting a place like that. Maybe he believes the gossip about the treasure and thinks he's going to find it in the house. Hmm? That's what Adam thinks. He doesn't want them to have the house at all. He thinks they're crooks. I think your Adam gets carried away sometimes. Mind you, Ellen Perfect never cared much for them. She used to say that Mrs Smith was very stuck up and Mr was very rude, or so Squeak Wilson told me once. Squeak Wilson? Mm -hmm. How did he know about the Smiths? Well, Ellen Perfect's his daughter. She used to charge the Smiths at one time. Dad? Mm -hmm. Was Squeak Wilson once very friendly with old Mr Codling? Oh, no, not as far as I know. He used to work in the garden till old Mr Codling sent him packing. I remember one evening he got as drunk as a lord on the old man's homemade wine. Years ago it was, but Squeak still says it was the best wine he ever tasted. Anyway, if you've got nothing to do, David, how about mowing the lawn? David? I just had to have one last try at solving the mystery. I was sure Squeak knew something important. If I could only get it out of him, maybe even now there was a chance. Hello, Mr. Wilson. 
What do you want? I bought you some licorice. Oh, licorice has flavour. Yeah. Don't you go about telling my daughter, though. She says sweet is as bad for my indigestion. <laughs> Not a nonsense. Your daughter's Mrs. Perfect, isn't she? That's right. My dad said she once worked for the Smiths, but she didn't like them. Darn rude, my Ellen said he was, with all his fancy house and fancy name. What do you mean, fancy name? Isn't he really called Smith? Then what is he called? Oh, my Ellen could tell you. I don't rightly remember. They're selling codlings, you know, to Mr. Smith. But if he's a crook or something, or if he's hiding under another name, Miss Codling ought to be told. Something about a tree. Now, uh, tell me some trees, lad. Beach? No. Oak? No. Sycamore? No. Elm? Elmworthy. No. Ash. That's it. Ashworthy. Ashworthy Smith. Ashworthy Smith? Are you sure? Yes, he just told me. Hang on. Hello? What? There's a family tree written on the back of the portrait. A family tree, yes. Now, you know Jonathan Codling's daughter, Sarah, the one who knew the rhyme? Well, I know this sounds incredible, but she married somebody called Ashworthy from Cumberland. Well, don't you see? It must be the same family. Sarah must have told her children and grandchildren and so on about the treasure, and they've probably always known the story and the rhyme, just as our family have. So that proves it. Mr Ashworthy Smith is after the treasure. We've got to stop Aunt Dinah. If I go now, I'll just catch the Carsford bus. I'll try and catch Aunt Dinah, and you stay there. It's coming! It's coming! Miss Codling. Sorry I'm late. That's all right, Mr. Smith. In the last few minutes, I've discovered something rather interesting. Oh? Yes, I think I've discovered exactly why you want to buy my house, Mr. Smith. Mr. Ashworthy Smith? How the devil did you know that? Never underestimate boys, Mr. Smith. I don't. Well, if boys can make you change your mind about selling, you're a fool. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Smith. I've every intention of selling you my house. But, now that I know how anxious you are to buy it, I should like a few days to reconsider the price. Come, David. So all we gained was time. Miss Codling and Mr Smith went on haggling about the price for days. But Miss Codling must have known they'd agree in the end. Because she started sorting out things in the house and deciding what had to be kept or sold or thrown away. Adam quite liked rootling around in the dusty, forgotten places. He said our only chance now was coming across the treasure by accident. That's why we went down the cellar. But we didn't find anything. Come on. OK. You go on up and I'll turn off the lights. Look at the state of you both. David, whatever will your mother say? Oh, she's used to it. There's nothing much down there, Aunt Dinah, except David found that old lamp. Oh, lovely. They can go to the antique shop with the other things. Perhaps you'd take them down this afternoon, after you've cleaned up a bit. Yes, OK. I suppose old Smith's so rich he'll fill up the cellar with wine again. I wouldn't be at all surprised. It's a long time since the Codlings had any wine in the house. Oh, wait a minute, though. We have got some homemade stuff. So long ago, I'd forgotten. Father made it from an old recipe. 
something else he was keeping until John came home. He stored it up in the roof of all places. I suppose it's still there. In the roof? Yes, that's right. Old people get funny ideas. The roof trap was in the ceiling of his room and... Perhaps you ought to go and get it down again. No, you'll get filthy up there. But are filthy already. Oh, Come on. Yes, but... <sighs> it must be up there somewhere. Yeah, nobody would go to all this trouble even to spill wine. Even if they were a bit posy. Come on. This is it. I'm sure of it. Yeah. You start down there and I'll look over here. Okay. You go on the ladder and I'll bring you down to Okay. It. Now, David, be careful. Adam, what are you doing now? Turn my son, John. Must be good wine. Mm. Got everything? I hope so. Come on. I believe both sides are well satisfied. You have an extremely good price. And I have what I want. Well, I hope it's what you want, Mr. Smith. Oh, indeed it is. I've no doubt that I'll find the treasure in the end. If, as you've told me, your father hid it again, it must be in the house or garden. If necessary, I shall have every path dug up, every 
every plant uprooted to find it. I shall have wallpapers and woodwork stripped away. Even if I have to pull the whole house down, I shall find it. Good day, Mum. You all right, miss? Oh, yes, Squeak, I'm all right. Now, have you got those bits and pieces I gave you? Uh, yes, miss, I, I've got them. Just going home. What a lovely smell. Reminds me of something long ago. Must be the roses or the honeysuckle. Good night, miss. Good night, Squeak. <laughs> He's drunk. Hey, can you smell something? Sort of sweet. Like lots and lots of roses. Ow. Hey! Hey, where are you doing my bike? Yes, yes. Here, your grandfather's writing. Four jars made by D. Dinah. Of which P.W. drank one without permission. Philip Wilson. Yes. It is privately refilled by me and labelled as first to be opened when Jay comes home. All four hidden for safety under the water tank. Under the water? We're idiots. Idiots. It's in one of the wine jars. with him the whole time. They must be here somewhere. Have a look around, quickly. Hey, look! It's not the right one anyway. David, let me see that jar a minute. Of course. Adam, David, the 
treasure hasn't been stolen. No, there's been a mistake. It's quite safe, I promise you. <laughs> la, 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 Now, make the tea. I won't be long. La, 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 I think she's gone a bit mad. Do you think we ought to get a doctor? I don't know. Let's make the tea first, anyway. See what she's like when she comes back. Ah, tea already? Good, that's just what I need. Now, as this is such an auspicious occasion, I should like some flowers. A rose, I think, would be uh, appropriate. Adam, go and cut one of those dark red ones from the bush by the summer house. OK, Aunt Dinah. And you go too, David. <coughs> We've got it! It was there, by the rose bush! Well, go on. Open it up. Oh, let me. Now, be careful. That's it. Take it off first. Can you manage, Adam? You... Oh, good. <gasps> What's there? There's a sort of bag. Well, bring it out. Take Come it out on. gently. Oh. We don't. Here, well, I'll take it. <laughs> now, open it carefully. That's mm. it. Right, Aunt Dinah. We can stay. Yes, dear. Well, of course, Mr Smith didn't want the house after that. So at last, Codlings were safe, and Adam and Miss Codling had enough money to live there forever. The next afternoon, I brought back the minnow. I still thought there was something fishy about the way we'd found the treasure in the end. Had it really been in the garden all the time? Adam thought it had, but I wasn't so sure. I thought Miss Codling had put it there. But why? And if so, where had she found it? When I got to Codling's, Adam said his aunt was just going to open the rose wine because they had something to celebrate at last. There, yeah. thank you. Dear? Here's to you, Adam and David, and thank you. Thank you both for saving codlings. The minute I smelled the wine, I knew the answer to the mystery of the wine jars. It was a wonderful smell, and I suddenly remembered where I'd smelled it before. It was Squeak. When we saw him, he'd already drunk a whole jarful, the one I'd found empty in the garden. The other, the one with the treasure inside, he was taking home to keep. He'd thought there was more wine inside. Miss Codling must have realised and had gone round to Squeech that afternoon to get it back. Aunt Dinah, we must put up Jonathan Codling, now the house is ours again. It's not the same without him hanging in the hall. Oh, I'll go, I know where he is. Well, why don't you go this way, Adam? Miss Codling, mm -hmm. about the treasure. I don't think it was in the garden all the time. Somebody took it and you brought it back. And I think I know that somebody was. Don't be silly, David. You and Adam found the treasure. That's how it should have been. And that's how it was. 